You're going to want to save this video and send it to as many friends as possible because this video is going to be a heavy hitter. I've got 10 things for you and number seven will change your life. Number one, understand that there's two types of financial independence and you have to reach both of them if you want to truly be financially independent. So the first one is being financially independent in the sense of you don't have to rely on anybody for money and you can fend for yourself and even help other people with their finances if you ever need to. And that is also known as being financially stable. But the second one is the one that everybody's going after right now. And that's being financially independent in the sense of you don't have to rely on a paycheck to survive. And that means you have enough money saved and invested to cover all your expenses at all times. I will show you how to get to both of these and you start by following number two, which is get to know your numbers very well. And that's how much money are you making every month and how much money are you spending every month? Most of you know exactly how much money you make every month after taxes, but a lot of you can't even think of how much money you spend every month. And that's a problem if you want to be financially independent because it prevents you from doing number three. And that's deciding on how much money you will dedicate to your future every month. If you can't figure out how much money you're spending right now, how can you plan to spend more money on your future with confidence? So I created something very special for you. I'm actually gonna show you right now exactly what it looks like. Now what you're looking at right now, this is what I call a smart money calculator. So at the top here, you're going to enter in however much money you make per month. Let's say you make $5,000 per month after taxes. We enter that in there and you it calculates your yearly salary for you after taxes. I went ahead and entered some expenses in there for you just so you can see how this is going to look for you when you end up downloading this. You can get this from the link in the description, but check this out. So you enter the amount of money that you spend per month on your constant expenses, which are going to be your things like rent, utilities, phone bill, car note, things that are more constant that you can pretty much expect that you cannot avoid at all. And once you enter these in, in this gray box is going to calculate everything for you. And that's going to let you know how much money you spend per year on these things. And the same thing goes for this box over here where we have the other expenses which are a little more inconsistent like they can go up and down in price every now and then but it's going to be things like groceries entertainment restaurants gas and so you may have more expenses than that and that's why i have a bunch of different rows where you can fill your own things in for you but for the sake of this example we're going to keep this as simple as possible so as we see over here on the right side where you see my mouse this right here is showing you the total cost per year for both of these types of expenses combined. And then that's just the total that it's gonna cost you per year, even though you're making this amount of money per year, 60,000 in this example. So this right here is showing you the total amount of money you're left over with per year after constant expenses and after other expenses and those are separate. And then over here, it shows you the total amount of money that you're gonna to have to your name after those expenses are taken care of. But then below that, this is the most important one that I really want you to pay attention to. This is the total amount of money left over per month. And that is $800 in this specific example. So if you think this is going to be helpful, I highly recommend that you go ahead and grab it down in the description. It's called the Smart Money Calculator. But this is going to help you understand your personal finances for the entire year at a glance. And in this example, we're going to have $800 left over at the end of every month. And that's going to be very important for the next step. Because since you're watching this video, I have a feeling you're not just going to blow this $800. You actually want to figure out how to make it grow. I'm going to show you how to do just that. In order to make your money grow, I'm going to introduce you to number four. And that's doing the simple act of making your money work for you. And there's levels to this, so consider this level one. Here's what I want you to do. That $800 that we have left over at the end of every month, I want you to look at that as an example for yourself. You might have a different number, but let's say you have $800 left over. I want you to decide on how much of that are you going to commit to save every month. And so for this example, let's say we're deciding on saving $300 without fail every month. Cool. Here's what I want you to do from there. When you get paid, set your bank account to automatically send $300 straight to your savings account. And if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can cut that $300 in half and have $150 from your first check and then $150 from your second check. But the day you get paid, make sure that money comes out and goes straight into your savings account. The reason for this is because it's best to save first and then spend what you have left over than to spend first and save what you have left over. That's backwards to me. 
And once you've saved a minimum of one to $2,000 in your regular savings account, here's what I think you should do. I think it would be wise to open up a high yield savings account and then start setting your bank account to automatically send $300 to your high yield savings account which means you're gonna pause on your regular savings and only focus on the high yield savings account, this will be your emergency fund. And this would be wise because now you have $300 automatically being sent without you having to remember anything into an account that automatically grows your money for you. And by grow your money for you, I mean like 10 times as much as your regular savings is gonna earn you by having your money sit in there. So far this year, just by having my money sit in the high yield savings account, I've already earned over $230. And that's without me really adding that much to my high yield savings account. And the thing is this, no one's just gonna hand you $230 just for no reason. So it's better to have an extra $230 or however much you end up having than to not have it. And if you're wondering where you should open a high yield savings account, I'll just tell you what I've done. I opened mine up with Marcus by Goldman Sachs. And if you're interested in Marcus by Goldman Sachs, I do have a link in the description. And if you open an account through my link, you will get extra interest going towards your new high yield savings account. Now, while you're working on these things that we just talked about in the background, you should already be putting money into your 401k every time you get paid. This is the first layer of financial independence because first of all, it does show you the power of investing, but also most employers do have what is called a match program where they give you an extra amount of money going into your 401k just for you putting in a certain amount of money every month, which means they throw extra money in there for free. That'll make your 401k grow faster. Now, even though I think 401ks are great and I've personally been able to grow mine to almost $100,000 in just over five years, I want to show you a game changer, which is number six. You want to also have a Roth IRA along with your 401k. It's another tax advantage to count, but this time, instead of being taxed when you withdraw your money once you hit the retirement age, you don't get taxed at all. And that's because the money going into this account has already been taxed. This is a game changer because you have more freedom when it comes to what you can invest in within that account and you have no company limitations. Anyway, if you can put $1,000 to $7,000 within this account per year, I highly recommend that you do so. So in our example where we have $800 left every single month, we've already dedicated $300 of that to our savings account. So let's say in this example, we dedicate another $150 to our Roth IRA, which is gonna be $1,800 per year. In doing this, you'll build a lot more wealth, a lot faster, and once you get more money and become more comfortable investing, you'll start to increase the amount of money you put in this account. Now the one thing that will change your life is understanding that both of those accounts we just talked about, the 401k and Roth IRA, understanding that those two accounts are great, but they're still not enough to get the results that you want. Now what you need is number seven, which is an individual brokerage account. And again, this is investing in the stock market. And in doing this, you'll build more wealth and become even more financially independent. The cool thing about this and your Roth IRA is one, you'll see your money grow, but two, you'll get dividend payments, which is passive income directly from the stock market if you invest in the right things. And within this account, we have a lot of freedom when it comes to what we can invest in and you don't have to wait till you retire to use the money that you've gained. So we've dedicated 300 of our $800 to savings and another $150 to our Roth IRA. That means we have $350 left of our $800. Now I would say if you're able to dedicate another $200 towards your individual brokerage account and invest in the right thing, I would say that you're golden. Because even though $200 isn't that much, if it's invested in the right thing, you will see some very good growth in a very short amount of time. Plus, we all have to start somewhere. When I started, I was doing $100 a month. Now, if you're dedicating $200 to that, now you have $150 left per month. And you can decide how you wanna spend this money. I would say if you do have any low interest debt, like student loans, for example, to throw that extra $150 towards that, or throw some of that $150 towards that debt because out of the total amount of money that you spend per year anyway, your debt is gonna be calculated into that whenever you enter it into that spreadsheet that I showed you. Let's say you have a $200 bill that you pay every single month 
for the minimum payment for your debt, that's already fixed into the total number that you're spending per year anyway. So that extra 150, you can put a portion of that or all of that on top of however much you're spending for your debt every single month. And that way you'll knock your debt out a lot quicker or you can just have fun with it. And you'll see very quickly that, man, I wanna have more money left over at the end of the month to do even more. You can start to adjust the numbers in the other expenses category and make them lower because you control those. But the biggest piece of advice that I have for you is something that I really want you to be careful about and pay very close attention to because not doing this is gonna stop you from creating and sustaining financial independence. And that's number eight, which is don't touch anything. I don't want you touching your emergency fund unless a legit emergency pops up, and sometimes they do. But even then, at least prioritize exhausting your regular savings account first and then start digging into your emergency fund. And that's if you absolutely have to. But also, I don't want you to touch your Roth IRA, your 401k, your individual brokerage account. I want you to leave those uninterrupted so you can allow for them to grow. The thing about investments is, yes, they might be exciting at first. You might see a lot of money, a lot more money than you've ever seen. You might see it go up by thousands of dollars. But the thing is, they're not mature yet. You want them to get to the hundreds of thousands, to the millions of dollars. You know, you have to let them mature. Right now, think of your accounts as like they're babies and you want them to mature and become adults and be successful adults, become married, have more money babies, and then those babies end up becoming bosses and then hiring money employees that go back and bring you more money. Weird analogy, I know, but that's literally what you're doing when you invest money. You send money to bring you back more money. That is essentially what you're doing. And the way I'm gonna explain that to you the best is I'm basically telling you don't pull your money out too early just because you think it's a lot because I'm gonna show you something that's very powerful and this was explained to me in class one day and this is what got me into investing in the first place. So there's a question floating around saying, would you rather have a million dollars today or would you rather have a penny doubled every day for 30 days? And most people would say, I want a million dollars right now, but if you said a million, you're wrong. Because if you would have chose a penny doubled every day for 30 days, you would have ended up with $5,368,709.12. More than five times more than a million dollars. But I'm going to put this on the screen in case you think I'm BS. And plus, I'm going to share something very powerful with you. If at day 25, you were like, oh, I'm at $167,000. I'm going to pull my money out. It's never going to get to a million. Yeah, you would have gained $167,000 that you wouldn't have normally had, but if you would have just held on for a few more days on day 30, you'd end up with $5,368,709.12. Let your money mature and let this be the lesson that you needed to be called to be patient and just let your money grow. Now, things are going to happen. Emergencies are going to pop up. Life happens to everybody. But what I'm saying is you really, really, really want to do everything in your power not to touch your investments. There have been times where I've had to dig into my savings and things like that. But I've been able to sustain and still grow my net worth well beyond $100,000 just by not disrupting the growth of my investments by pulling money out of them. So it didn't matter what my checking account, savings account, or emergency fund was doing. Because I didn't touch my investments, they continue to grow and flourish. Number nine, spend less money than you make. And when you make more money, dedicate a portion of it to your investments and to your savings. Instead of upgrading your entire life once you get a promotion or a raise at work to be in the same exact spending position that you're in right now, or worse, make some room for yourself to get rich. I mean, I don't know how else to say it because if you're in a position where you have $500 left over at the end of the month and you're just hoping and praying that you get that promotion so now you can have $700 left at the end of every month, why would you then go and upgrade your lifestyle so much that now you have $300 left at the end of the month because you got an expensive car payment? And see, now you're going the wrong way. And I'm not judging, it's just I'm passionate about this because I want people to see the small tweaks and adjustments they can make in their life to make themselves rich. 
Now, you can upgrade some aspects of your life, but you don't want to get to the point where you're in the red. But yes, enjoy your money. Just give yourself some room to build wealth and become rich. Number 10, never stop adding. What I mean by this is when you get dividends from the stock market, reinvest them back into the stock market. When you get a bonus at work, make sure your savings and your investments get a bonus too. When you get overtime, a raise, a promotion, or any form of extra money, make sure you're always adding that to your savings and your investments. And I have a quick bonus tip for you since you're still here. You're probably wondering what you should invest in. And if that's the case, I made a really good video about that, walking you right through exactly what to invest in. You can check it out right here.